The Big UP deal is made up of 271,000 acres. A big portion of that is in a conservation easement owned by the state that will forever protect it for public access and for sustainable forestry practices. And we also protected 23,000 acres of the Two-Hearted River watershed, which essentially finishes and completes the protection of the Two-Hearted. There's a nested scale here of impact from the site at the Two-Hearted to the Two-Hearted watershed to Lake Superior to the northern forest of Great Lakes, to the Great Lakes as an ecosystem. The Big UP deal really is emblematic of our leap from site to systems. And all those things have to be linked because they all have to add up to a whole system being resilient and functioning in a healthy way that it can continue to support our economic base of tourism and timber industry and provide the protection of biodiversity. Small end, five centimeters. And at the large end, three, 33 species unknown. The science drives everything for the Nature Conservancy. The next step after a project like this is to use what we're learning in our forest restoration in the Two-Hearted and make sure it's understood for other watersheds and other forests across the northern Great Lakes. The Kamehameha School's Bishop Estate decided to sell just a vast area of land in the UP to a timber investment management organization. And then we went and negotiated a deal with them afterwards. And what we came up with was the idea of buying working forest conservation easements. That way we don't have to pay, you know, 100% of the cost of the forest. We only have to pay 30 or 40% of the cost of the forest so that somebody wants to own those trees because there's an income from them. And we wanted to own the development rights on those trees. And so strip out the development rights, and then the, the remainder value is in the working aspect of that as a timberland. But the Nature Conservancy couldn't bring millions of dollars to the table, so we had to have partners. And so the structure we came up with was 25% of the money roughly would come from public funding, 25% would come from private philanthropic funding, and 50% was private timber capital invested in that property. And so it was kind of a, you invest a dollar, you get $4 worth of outcome. And that was the way we sold it to the governor because the key things the governor wanted was protect jobs, increase investment in Michigan, protect the public access to the outdoors, and then you know the, the tail end of that was the conservation stuff. I think that tourism is a major aspect of the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. It affects a lot of people, whether they have an actual resort or a business. It affects uh, suppliers that supply us our groceries and milk and bread and chips. A lot of the businesses just depend on tourism. And then I learned a lot of things about the Nature Conservancy with how they were select cutting, giving jobs to people to take care of that. I think it's going to be an advantage because there is definitely a connection between tourism and conservation. And I think the Nature Conservancy, they're just doing a lot of wonderful things. And so what was really groundbreaking about this deal is that it found a way to achieve an outcome that sustains communities around one of the key bases of that economy, which is timber, and, and yet ensures that that timber and those forests are going to be there forever. When the word started trickling down from our field people that the Kamehameha lands might be coming up for sale, and our wildlife biologists were concerned because of what it might do to wildlife habitat, because it has to have a large uh, area of habitat. They travel around quite a bit in order to find the right place to be able to raise their young, to get through the winter. And so it was immensely scary to take a quarter million acres that might be subdivided and selling it into smaller parcels, affecting habitat, affecting wood production, affecting wildlife species. Uh, all of those things seemed more like 
a glacier that was coming and couldn't be stopped. And the only reason it worked out is the, the Nature Conservancy came to the Department of Natural Resources and said, here's a partnership. Let's see if we can make this work. And rather than the state of Michigan looking to own all that property, the state of Michigan could instead hold an easement on the property that made sure that it was managed in a sustainable fashion. Ecologically, this land deal will have an important impact in the Upper Peninsula in protecting those quarter million acres. They're connecting up almost 10 times that amount of acreage of wildlands, nearly two and a half million acres. So they're key for getting wildlife to move around and survive and prosper. The Two Hearted is unique because it's one of the least impacted watersheds. There's no dams on it, there's very few people that live in the watershed, and it's now 80% protected. So our first idea was that we, at the very end of this deal, we would have helped um, trans we would have helped broker the deal, we would help create the documentation for these rather complex easements, and then the DNR would hold these easements for long-term management, and that would be the end of the story. But we wanted extra protection in the two-hearted, and so during the negotiation, it became clear with the landowner, they said, look, why don't we just change the deal and you can own a bunch of the two-hearted. And so we ended up buying over 23,000 acres ourselves in the two-hearted. And so that area we now call the two-hearted river reserve. And so we have preserves where we do not cut the trees. We really let the natural processes totally just dictate. And then we have the reserve where we actually do some conservation forestry to try to restore some diversity back into the forest. One of the many things that impressed me about the Nature Conservancy is the commitment to science. And what we're doing here in the Two-Hearted is experimental. We're trying to create a forest that has a lot of the same attributes that those forests would have had 150 years ago. So the question is, how do we go from where we are today to that forest? Some of our stands are 97% sugar maple. Two little red maples. We recognize that that percentage of sugar maple is much higher than it would have historically been. So what we're trying to do is encourage the growth of other species of trees in those forests to have that species diversity that would have been similar to that pre-settlement forest. Because we know a diverse forest is a healthy forest. And then we've done some hard financial analysis. We've looked at growth and yield modeling, and we've compared restoration forestry to a traditional hardwood management, to a very aggressive income-focused management. And the reality is, is that the restoration forestry practices, if you're willing to wait, the return on investment is very similar to doing a traditional style management. So not only can we provide the ecosystem benefits and the, the benefits to the forest structure and diversity, we can also provide a return on investment to the investor. And I think what the big deal has done in the last five years is proven that we can have a healthy, vibrant forest products industry. We can achieve conservation so goals. 19. We can continue to support the economy of Michigan. And the easement has helped facilitate that and is going to continue to facilitate that type of economy and cooperation for the foreseeable future. The argument to get involved is so compelling to achieve results that have lasting significance for this earth, and it sets up win, 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 win. Business, conservation, philanthropy, and good people with a passion and understanding for what we're doing. And they stepped up. And so now the big UP deal is a milestone to another challenge, which is far greater. The Michigan chapter of the Nature Conservancy is in the middle of pulling together resources from the states bordering the Great Lakes and the Canadian provinces into an integrated plan to conserve these Great Lakes. It's from place-based to landscape-based, which is the UP deal, and that's a stepping stone to eco-region conservation. It involves an understanding that the work in this ecological region with these Great Lakes has meaning for conserving ecological regions throughout this world because they can learn from what we're doing here. But that's the task now, and it is many, many, many times more complicated than even the UP deal.
and it will take many years to get it done. But anything worthwhile doing is difficult, and it takes time, and you have to be determined. And gradually, step by step, I think we are making a difference.